HarperCollins and Harper Audio present The Shape of Family, a novel by Shilpi Somaya Gauda, performed by Shiromi Arcerio and Vikas Adam. We wanderers, ever seeking the lonelier way, begin no day where we have ended another day, and no sunrise finds us where sunset left us, even while the earth sleeps. We travel. We are the seeds of the tenacious plant, and it is in our ripeness and our fullness of heart that we are given to the wind and are scattered. Brief were my days among you, and briefer still the words I have spoken. But should my voice fade in your ears, and my love vanish in your memory, then I will come again, and with a richer heart and lips more yielding to the spirit will I speak. Yea, I shall return with the tide. And though death may hide me, and the greater silence enfold me, yet again will I seek your understanding. From The Farewell, Khalil Gibran May 19, 2015, 5.59 a.m. A young woman hovering on the edge between adolescence and adulthood, is walking. She climbs over a bed of rocks that marks the border between city sidewalk and seashore. She wears clothing the color of snow, of clouds, of nothing. She wears nothing on her feet. She carries nothing. She walks slowly but deliberately toward the Pacific Ocean Yet she possesses none of the regular trappings of those who do so at this hour. No fishing pole, no surfboard, no wetsuit. It is early morning, not long since dawn broke. The sun is beginning to spread its orange hue on the horizon, but the air is still brisk. In one of the houses that line the cliff overlooking the beach, an elderly man rises and switches on the light in his kitchen. He's pondering whether it is a gift or a curse to wake at this ungodly hour every morning. It is peaceful, to be sure, but nothing else makes him feel more alone in the world. As he fills the kettle at the sink, he looks out the back window, as he does every morning. There are few people out at this hour, usually only an intrepid jogger or dog walker. This morning, he peers closer. He squints his eyes and opens them again to verify what he's seeing. She is almost a mirage, the young woman dressed in white. For a moment, from the pull of her hair into a loose knot at her nape, he imagines it is his late wife come back to see him. This thought, however improbable, makes him smile. As the water overflows the kettle, he returns to himself. From this angle, he now notices her olive skin, her youthful face. She walks with intention toward the roaring waves. Something is not right. A young woman alone in street clothes on the beach at this hour? He places the kettle in its cradle, picks up the kitchen telephone, and dials the police. Home. One. Karina. 2007. Karina sat outside the principal's office, kicking her feet against the wooden bench. She knew the noise was annoying the receptionist, who glanced up periodically with a stern look from behind the tall barrier. Karina didn't care. What else could happen to her? She was already waiting in the principal's office. Her mother had been called. The only redeeming part of this whole situation was that Prem wasn't here with her. He was, with any luck, outside with the other first graders playing tether ball or four square. Twenty minutes earlier, the start of lunch, she'd been at the monkey bars with her best friend Izzy when she'd seen Prem across the schoolyard, sitting at the lunch table. Her younger brother, usually running around wild with his friends during this time, was cowering at the corner of the table, with an older boy hovering nearby. Karina crossed the yard, and as she approached, she recognized Jake Potash from her grade. Man, that stinks! Jake pinched his nose and pointed at her brother's stainless steel tiffin, filled with rice and vegetable curry. Get that crap away from me! 
Sample complete. Ready to continue? Thank you. 